Okay na? Let's start. Okay. Uh, let me read first uh, Psalm 95. Okay, it says right here, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. For the Lord is great, God the great King above all gods. In His hands are depth of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed dry land. Uh, verse 6 says right here, uh, Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if you would hear his voice, do not harden your heart, as you did in Merava, as you did that day of Massa in the wilderness, where your uh, ancestor tested me. Man, so it says right here on the first verse, let's let's come, okay, let's uh, go together, come together, let's gather together, okay, and let's sing for joy to the Lord, okay. Why? Because He is good, amen. He is amen. good, and He is our God. And he made us and he saved us, us. So I would like everybody if you would like to stand, you could stand if you want to sit down, you may sit down. So maybe I'll I'll ask uh, Sister Magu to open the prayer, then we will start. Father God, we just wanna thank you, O oh God, for gathering us, Lord God, in this place, Lord God, where we can enjoy your the beauty of your creation lord jesus lord we as we gather this evening father god we pray for you uh your word lord god to just come speak to us Lord god tonight i pray lord that your holy spirit would just guide us surround us Lord god and just speak to us this evening lord god allow us to hear your voice allow us to see you for who you are lord god lord we are here, Lord God, grateful for all the things that you've done and for all the things that you're going to do, Lord God. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being our Maker, Lord God. And we just want to bless you this evening, Lord God. May you be pleased, Lord God, with the hearts of God, full of praises and thanksgiving before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So uh, if you don't have the song, uh, you can download it in Messenger if you are, you are part of Messenger or the group me. Okay, uh, maybe we can have two minutes on that if you, you are not able to download the song. Okay, uh, we'll start with uh, the Trading My Sorrow. Okay, then after that we'll be uh, singing the Holy Forever. Amen. So take out your your cell phone with you and the relics is on messenger or in group me. adventure and I believe God that you know as we start our you know our worship to him as we gather to him uh, let's try to you know just lay aside lay down all that is burdening our hearts okay so now all the worries all the stress all the uh, responsibilities okay 
everything that are that is heavy in your heart start laying it out to the Lord amen uh, we are here and uh, we need refreshment in our soul okay, some are, some of us are tired from work okay and from the you know from the worries of life but I believe as we gather here the Lord will just renew our strength amen so let's continue to worship him continue to praise him amen so let's uh, let's worship him so let's sing the holy forever done before us all who will believe we'll sing the song of Lord God, that without you in the middle of us, Lord God, everything we, that we do is futile, Father God. That's why we are, we thirst for you, Lord God. We want to worship you and we want to glorify your name, Lord Jesus. We want to exalt you above all, Lord God. Lord, I pray you will minister to your people tonight, oh Lord. That you will meet us tonight, Father God, in our right Lord, I ask your presence, Lord God. Lord God, to just be magnified, Lord God, in this place in our right now. Lord, I pray that you sanctify, Lord, our hearts, Lord. Lord, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, oh Father God. All the sins that we have done. Lord God, this week, today, Father God, and in the past, Father God, we pray, Lord, that you'll be the one, Father, to cleanse us, all, Lord God. Lord, even tonight, Lord, we want to just focus on you, Father God. We would like to focus on you alone, oh Lord God. We want to worship you, oh Lord. We want to wanna give you all the glory tonight, Father. What? to give you our all our attentions Lord God for you deserve it Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus for dying for us on the cross for giving our sins oh Lord we are forever grateful oh Lord Jesus and on the last day Lord God in Revelation you say Lord God that there will come a time that all of us whom you save Lord God will bow down at the throne Lord God and sing this song, Lord God. And we will sing, Holy, 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 Holy the Lord Almighty. Lord, we look forward to that day, Lord God, that every breath and Lord, we will bow down before you, Lord God, and we will worship you, oh Lord. What an awesome day, oh Lord. Lord, may we have that desire even tonight to worship you Lord God to the highest even that day didn't come yet Father God we pray Lord that even tonight 
that we will pray, Lord God, that that tenacity, Lord God, of worshiping you, Father God. been a privilege and uh, you know to share the word of the Lord tonight and I'd like to thank Dave and um, brother Anthony for uh, organizing and um, leading us you know to, to have this uh, fellowship and, you know a camping to be uh, Christ centered so you know praise God to that thank you guys Nice to, to see everybody again. You know, that is good. I see the old faces, and you know, I could really tell that God is the same yesterday, today, and tonight. <laughs> just yesterday, it was so, you know, just like yesterday. <laughs> you know, I remember when we were just, you know, hanging out. We were young, younger, right? All he is are uh, are. Um, active you know in, in our events as a young adult that's a lot of fun you know i can see right now god's faithfulness to us right now we're you know from young adult to young couple and praise god now we have our kids you know, now they're in the youth ministry right so god is good right now we're couples and we're we're losing titles <laughs> 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 no, but God is good. So I just, I just want to um, um, share like a like a short devotion. All right. Um, and are we on? Are we live? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I just want to uh, um, since the the theme for. Um, our camping right now is humility, so it's just um, fitting as well as the Fort Square Church, you know, our um, corporate um, name is also celebrating 100 years in Kenya, and they're also focusing in, uh, in Christ, in Jesus, our Lord, so that is also their theme. So for me, when uh, Dave uh, told me that if we could have uh, humility as a team for our devotion this night, for this campaign, so it's just, you know, the Lord is just impressing into my heart. And who's the best um, model for humility is Jesus Christ, right? So that is good. And, um, you know, so our Father's love and provision all you know we can see it all located in jesus christ so and the holy spirit lead us and pointing us to jesus as well appropriating in our lives all that um, jesus accomplished through his death and resurrection jesus is the beginning and the end the first and the last in him we live and move in our very being. So we just I just wanted to um, it's just a short passage but it's one of the powerful passage and God Jesus modeling humility and you can learn a lot from it and you can see uh, from his life. Um, that it reminds us that humility is an utmost value in God's kingdom. But before that, um, we sing or we study 
uh, Christ's humility. Let's see who Jesus is. Let's look at the passages uh, that the New Testament uh, suggests that Jesus' divine nature by comparing Jesus to several names and attributes used for God. So here are a few examples of Jesus being compared to God. Um, can I uh, designate this as a scripture that we are reading? John 1.1 1, 1. How do you ever... Holly, John 1 1. Um, and uh, John 10 30. John can read it. <laughs> John, John Kaba. Can you read John 10 30? No, uh, you can, I'll, I'll tell you when to read it. Um, so designate John 10 32 John, Revelation 1 17. Again, these are the, the, the Jesus and the names of God and his, uh, Jesus attributes. Uh, Ephesians 1 22 to 23. Next. John 21 17. Uh, well, Sandy. John 21, 17, and John 1 to 4, uh, James, uh, Revelation 22, verse 13, and 10, uh, that's it. <laughs> it's about humility, I'm going to tell you to this interview about John 1 4. And then, what else? Revelation 22, verse 13. Uh, Roman, Roman here. Uh, John 6 35. Um, Ellen. John 10 11. Uh, Sister Ligaya. And. Uh, Corinthians 521 uh, June what? First, yeah. Second Corinthians 521 First Peter 224 uh, who, who else doesn't have a verse to read mm -hmm. Dr. Anthony I don't have one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give it um, to somebody. okay I'll read it I forgot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yours is Revelation. Huh? Revelation. Revelation. Okay, Magu, First Peter two twenty four, and Second Corinthians twelve nine. Yeah, and um, who else? Um, April, Matthew one verse twenty three. David, you have a you have your phone. Uh, John fourteen twenty seven. So let's read. Let's 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 see what are the attributes of God, who Jesus is. All right, because we're going to study his, his, his humility. Oh, John one one. <clears throat> okay, John one one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John one one. Yeah, John 10, 30. And the, I and the Father are one. All right, Jesus is one with God. Christians 1, 21 to 23. 22, 23. 22 to 23. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, <laughs> which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. That's amen. Jesus is omnipresent. What does it mean? Jesus means he's everywhere. God is everywhere. Jesus is the same with God. Jesus is God. Jesus is omnipresent. 
Thank you for with us. Wherever we go, we can be anywhere. Oh, Jesus. Right? So, next is John 21, verse 17. Out of my life that I may take it again. Thank you. 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 He knows everything, right? So, amen? Amen. We're learning about Jesus Christ right now. So, this is the way, the, the truth, truth, and the life. And the life. And he's the reason why we're here together, the reason why, you know, we congregate, the reason why we have kids right now, because God orchestrated for us to have our husbands and wives. Right? Amen. Jesus is good, right? Let's go. <laughs> Jesus is what? Who is Jesus? Um, now we're in John 1.4. John 1.4 In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. John 1.4 In Him, in Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. Jesus is the light giving. Amen. Uh, mm. Verse Revelation 22, verse 13. Okay, Revelation 22, 13. <coughs> okay. Amen. Jesus El Olam. He is the beginning. John 10, 11. First Peter 2, 24. He is the Jehovah Rapha. He is the great one. Now we're first for tonight. This time we can be looking at Christ. Philippians 2 verse 6 and verse 8. 2 6 8. Can someone read? Philippians 2 verse 6 to 8. God did not count his equality with God a thing to be grasped, <coughs> but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is the humility of Christ. This is one of the most amazing passages, passages that the Bible, uh, uh, passages from the Bible, which God demonstrates the humility. Uh, Jesus is really God. Of humanity, he became man, right? So this is um, uh, amazing, and one of the um, humility that we could see, the example of God's hum humility, um, Jesus Christ in, in his life. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Let's we'll start with our uh, morning devotion. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Lord, we. We honor you tonight, Father, in the midst of this um, place, O oh God, you know that you are sovereign, O oh Father. We know that you are almighty, O oh God. 
your own mission and your own presence. We thank you, O oh God, for this wonderful morning that you have gathered this Peace Day of Family once again, O oh God, in this wonderful weekend together. May everybody, Father, be um, able to enjoy each other and may we honor you in this day that we're going to gather from. We glorify you, Father, in our midst, and we just want to lift your name on high this morning. And as we go on with our um, activities for the day and until tomorrow, God, we may, we may not forget that you are the center of our lives. We declare this morning to you once again, Holy Spirit, we invite you today. Be with us as we give our worship and listen to your word. Thank you, Father, for this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Emily. I can eat. Thank you. <laughs> Lord, I need to name on high. Sister Maggie, hindi na nakasama. Emergency! Oh. Okay, so it's your first time. Welcome to the First Timer Campus. First time. So give, give them the best experience. So that we... <laughs> they can come back. Yeah, so anyway. So, uh, so last week, me and the speaker, the mess, are talking about what we... Uh, we're going to be preaching about or uh, sharing about this uh, camp. So they said that you need to I suggest that we uh, at least, you know, do it differently so that we can hear uh, different pictures. Uh, so, so for me, um, even a uh, for those of you who are uh, home church is PCFLA, you know uh, our banner here this year is uh, perseverance, right? So you're gonna hear from me as perseverance. So uh, again, um, let me just pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, with a humble heart. Lord, uh, let your Holy Spirit guide us, Lord. Lord, whatever words spoken Lord is to glorify you and to honor you Lord and no one else nobody else except you Lord you mm -hmm. deserve all the glory and the praise Lord and I pray oh God for an obedient heart Lord so that whatever church in our life and um, Lord I pray oh God for a um, for a listening here so that we um, we can um, we can discern we can um, know what is right or wrong and um, pray all that for a sound mind so that we can um, fly in and out thank you lord amen amen so are we there yet Dad, are we there yet? Sounds familiar? <laughs> what about the some of the uh, the white packing? How far are we? How many more miles? <laughs> well, anyway, this is not too far from LA, but you know, some of us like but we experienced me, Richard, and Roman when we went to uh, interstate like 
have you uh, probably you experienced some um, like driving along the like the freeway highway like really long desert everywhere and then there's a mountain and then I said oh there's the mountain once we pass that you know I think we're we're uh, we're we're almost there so once we get there there's another like two hours three hours drive so it's really boring so <laughs> so honestly um what about you Dave have you been asked like that question <laughs> all the time all the time yeah okay but some of you probably because uh, you're the farthest so. <laughs> So probably some of you, they don't mind as long as they have the gadgets. The kids are, you know, listening their own music. They have their own video to listen to, uh, to watch to. They don't bother. And probably the wives, uh, I'm just going to see. <laughs> so it's just the dad that uh, uh, just driving. But, you know, you know, we will get there safely. And... You know, I will take you there, and uh, it's gonna be fun once we get there. So, what is that's the illustration of our Christian walk? You know, it's just a a demonstration. He, the the Lord doesn't need a perseverance. It's us. Even the dad is the one that driving. That you know, it's uh, we're gonna get there safely. But us as children, we sometimes get out of uh, out of focus. Especially now, in the in the world, there's so many uh, you know uncertainties, and we get easily felt negative and distracted with our with our focus, with our walk with God. And some of us, we went here. Because oh, it's too much at work. I wanna, I wanna unwind. I wanna, I wanna, you know, relax. So that's why, whenever we gather like this, it gets easily to be, uh, to be out of focus because there's so much uncertainty. There's so much things. We all work it's so hard, but you know, take heart. It says in First Chronicles sixteen eleven says, seek, seek the Lord and His strength. Seek, seek His presence continually. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. So this is uh, good that we still, you know, doing devotions. And tonight, uh, I think uh, Brother Anthony is gonna speak to us again, and then tomorrow. So also have this uh, stay here. We're going to hear the word. We are determined and persevere to continually come here. Even though there's so much traffic and, you know, coming from work. Some of us, uh, I think, uh, worked yesterday and then after went straight here. We still come here because we need it. It says in Psalms 27:14. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. So like I said, we were traveling. What do we do? We wait, right? We wait until we get here. So it's the same thing that we do as a Christian while we're waiting. We have to continually uh, seek the Lord and be prayerful. Amen. Amen. So I'm just going to give you the last verse that I have here. It's the Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not be faint. So when we wait, do we have to be passive or active? Well, just I'm just gonna wait here. You have to be actively waiting. By, by, how? You know, just your, just your, your, uh, lending your help to those in need. Sometimes it's just your presence. 
your pres I mean your presence. It 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 helps a lot, right? Sometimes they uh, they say, "Oh, happy to see you, good to see you." It's just enough. So we have to be actively uh, engaged while waiting on the Lord. And they shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. So when you are feeling less and passionate, less enthusiastic, we sometimes need a, a bit of guidance. And the word of the Lord, the Bible, is full of promises. The scriptures has a lot to say about the, the perseverance and determination. And we need that. Amen. Amen. So when you're feeling like that, just just uh, just pause yourself and do a, a a devotion. Read the Bible. This is our Friday night evening devotion. Amen. Amen. So let's start. Uh, let's start first with the uh, prayer. So let's have. Pastor Dave, please open up your prayer. Okay, Father God, Lord, we thank you once again for this continued fellowship tonight, Lord. Pray, Father God, that, Lord, you would prepare our hearts this evening to receive your word, Lord. Let our hearts be sensitive this evening to hear a rhema of your word from your Holy Spirit, Lord. We pray for Pastor Anthony that your anointing be upon him, Lord. And as for our worshipers, Lord, for, for Magoo and... Um, for Sister uh, Pastor Blanche, Father God, we just pray, Lord, your anointing and the worship be upon them tonight, Lord. Bless us this evening, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever we gather and uh, have this event, something like this, 
okay, we should have expectant heart, right? Wow. Okay, quick to hear it. Yes. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, my test today is at Micah the six eight. He said over here, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That's my custody. So my message for today is walking humbly with God. And uh, many people right now, they are so burdened with many things about, you know, reaching God. Especially when you are in religion, okay? There are many things that to-do list, right? To-do list in in reaching out to please their their God, man. Uh, you know, in in Torah there are hundreds of to-do list so that he they can please Yahweh. They put right there. Okay, they put those list. Okay, and uh, when you remember, Jesus said, you know, uh, that they are burdened okay, with those to-do list. But our God, thanks be to our, our Lord Jesus Christ, that they, He has given us this umbrella. Where in Micah it just says here that you can you just do only those these three things. It says here to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So let's try to. Uh, study this text okay so let's first uh, study the first text it says here to act justly okay what do you mean by acting justly okay acting justly is being fair you know you should be fair okay to everyone you should be fair to your work right you should be honest to your work we should have integrity to our work okay sometimes we we spend much of our, our time okay just going to you know Facebook or you know anything that's not out of our work and one of the things that the Lord requires of us is to act justly to act justly with our employer we have to really act okay honestly okay to what we are doing right now also we need to be honest also to our businesses so if you have a business okay you have to file your the right tax, the right amount of tax. Man, why? Because we are Christians. Why? Because the Lord is calling you to be righteous, and you are separated from the world. So we need to be fair, okay, to our job, to our school, okay, even to our family, to our children. Now let's. Let's not have favoritism if we have uh, children on us. Amen? So, again, the first one is to act justly. If you're a student, okay, refrain from cheating on your test. Okay, God see you. Even if nobody sees you, God see you. As we learned yesterday, that God is omnipotent. Okay? He's everywhere. He, he knows our hearts. He sees our hearts. Amen? So the next one is to love mercy. We need to love mercy means to have empathy to those who are in need. Okay? We need to be merciful to those who are in need. You know what? The, the Lord has giving you the privilege to come here in the United States. Whether you like it or not, the Lord has given you because the, the Bible says that all good things come from the Lord. You are here for a purpose. Amen? And you are here and God has blessed you so much. God has blessed you so much. But you know what? The Lord is telling you that don't for those blessings. That is not for you alone. We should be, you know, a channel of blessing of God. 
that is our main purpose. Why God is blessing you with finances? Because He wants you to be blessing to others. Yet, some of us are hoarding it. Some of us has been stingy with what God has given us. And you know what? If that's the case, then the blessing of God will not flow through you continuously. Yes, you will have money. Yes, you will have wealth. Yes, you have all this, you know, all this accumulated wealth. You will be happy for a while, okay? But you will not be fulfilled. You can have all these toys, all these gadgets, everything that you have but you will not be satisfied with God because our satisfaction is from the Lord so our satisfaction is when we obey God then we will be fulfilled that's why we have to be merciful most of us are from the Philippines and there's a lot of people over there who are really struggling with their lives and the Lord saying to you that I want to be a child of blessing to everyone. To, to the people in the Philippines, even here in America. There are, you have friends that, are, that have problems. You have pre friends that are depressed. The Lord wants you, you know, to just, just be with them. Just wants you to show God's self to them. Show the hope that you have for them. That's the main purpose of our life, is to shine the light of God in their life. And show mercy to what God is giving us. Also, to show mercy means you have to forgive. We need to forgive those who offend us. Okay, if somebody offended us, we have to forgive them. Now there's a saying that those hurt people hurt other people because they are hurt. Right? They hurt other people because they are hurt. And we look when you look at that perspective, it's much easier for us to forgive them. It's much easier for us to pray for them. Because God wants us, you know, to release that burden in our hearts. Okay? You know, the, the Bible says that, you know, He will be the one who will repay okay, those who wrong us. But more or less, the Lord, uh, the Lord says that love your enemies. We need to love our enemies in spite of. We have to pray for them. Even though they offended us, that they hurt us, we have to, you know, release that forgiveness. And we have to continually pray for them. Amen. You know what? Why, why, why do we need to pray for them? Why do we need to? They hurt us so much. Why do we need to release that forgiveness? You know what? Because they don't deserve hell. Even what amount of sin they have, they don't deserve hell. And if you know what hell is, it's an everlasting. That's why instead of having this anger, instead of having this rage in your heart, give it to the Lord and pray for their salvation. Even the most sinful person here on earth doesn't deserve that. That's why the Lord is asking us to, to forgive. So we need to show, show mercy. And the third text is to walk humbly with God. So this is our main text. So the first one is okay, to act justly. The second one is to love mercy. And the third one is to walk humbly with God. Now, with, okay, with those three texts that we have, the most important text is always on the last word. 
So the two words okay, to act justly and to show mercy is an outward manifestation okay, for others. This is for others. But for the, the, the third text, walking humbly with God is inside, is interior. It's working inside of us. Amen? You know, I have a favorite servant of God in the Bible. I so I, I use the word servant, okay, because many, you know, many preachers or you know other people call them heroes of faith. Okay? But when you, you when you you know if if that person standing right here and I tell him you are a hero of faith, then he will be offended. Why? Because. People that really serve God, he doesn't want honor to them. Doesn't want recognition, doesn't want fame in themselves. They always want to glorify God for life. They want, they want to just give glory to the Lord. They don't care who, you know, who gets the credit. They don't care about that. They do, do care that God is lifted up in their life. As John the Baptist says, May you increase, Lord, and may I increase. And I hope that that's also our heart. That, Lord, may you increase, and may I decrease. Humility is one of the seal of true servants. They don't, don't seek honor or prestige. They are not after recognition from men. They see to it that God is exalted and not themselves. And they always give back the glory to God if they receive glory. Enoch walked with God. It says here in Genesis 5.24, Enoch walked with God then he was no more because God had taken him away. Now for 300 years, Enoch walked with God. And because his life is so pleasing to the Lord, his life is so close to the Lord, that the Lord is so loved him so much, that because the, he loved him so much, he just took him away. He didn't experience death. Now that's my prayer too. That's our prayer. You know that we will be close to the Lord. That we will please the Lord with our life. And we can therefore assert that, you know, Enoch has a really very close relationship with God. And we can say that he is the center. Okay, his life is centered through God. Amen? So how do we walk with God? How do we, how do we get there? How do we walk with God? Okay, in our present time. That's the question. So the first one, how do we walk with God? The first one is walking humbly with God means that we realize His divine presence. Okay, many of us, okay, we just we just try to believe God is only by thought. No, it's not really real in ourselves. We, we just try to imagine God that He's there. He's there and He's just watching for us. Amen? So, many of us don't realize that God is real, that God could be present, could walk beside you. That God could be with you personally. But 
many of us this thing of God as fallacy. That yes, there's a Bible, yes, there's a church, I am hearing God, but I don't experience God at all. Do you experience God for real? Ask yourself, Lord, do I really believe you? Do I really experience you in my life? If you don't experience him in your life, then you are not walking with God. Because as much, you know, as God wants to walk with you, it comes first by faith. You must really believe that He is true, that you must really believe that He exists, and that you really believe that He is personal. As the Bible says, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, you know, Enoch, when he's walking with God, he's, he, he really believes that he's really walking beside him every day of his life. You know, walking is not just three times a day or three times a week. Walking with God is not just going to church, it's not going to Bible study or prayer meeting. That's not walking with God. Walking with God Constant. Walking with God is a daily experience okay, with Him. Do you experience okay, that relationship with God? Okay, walking with God implies closeness. When we walk with God, okay, we should be close to Him. Walking with God is friendship and intimacy. And you can only obtain all this. You can only experience the how to walk with God by through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because He's the one. Okay? He's the only way that truth and life. He's the one who can lead us to the Father. So if we don't have this relationship with Christ, if we haven't accepted yet, Christ as Lord and Savior, then you cannot have this close relationship with God. So, you know, the first thing that we need to do is to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. Charles Spurgeon in July 30, 1876 says, To walk with God, we must truly believe that He exists. He is observing just and rewarding of human deed. A real God really with us or there is no walking with God. So if you really don't believe that God can walk to you, God can be close to you, God can be friend to you, God can provide you. If you don't really believe that God could really change your life, if you really don't believe that God to provide for your needs then you are not walking with God you know uh, some of us stop walking with God or uh, even some of us even walking opposite of God if you got if you put God first or if you could put God in the second place or the third priority of life then you are not walking with God we have to remember that he created us and he deserves our full devotion to him are you afraid sometimes you know we don't want to walk with God because we are so afraid. We are so... There is this fear that we cannot provide for a family. This is the fear that God cannot give us a bright future. There is this anxiety that if I follow God, no, I will not have the best of life. And if you have those 
with you. You have that fear and anxiety. And you're saying to yourself, Lord, I don't need you. I don't believe you that you can provide for my family. That's why I'm doing it on my own. And my friend has tried. If you are so independent to God, then you have a prideful heart. And the Lord is saying, that come back. Come back to me and humble yourself. It's a matter when we when we try to really give our lives to the, to the Lord, then we can really find our purpose, our self-fulfillment, our true joy and peace in life. Yes, you may have all of this, you know, material things in your world, but you cannot find joy on those. We can go to all, you know, we can you can go everywhere. You can have a big house, you can travel everywhere. Okay, but let me tell you, it will not satisfy your life. Your life will be still empty. Because the true joy and the true peace will only come from the Lord. He'll be the one to give you true peace. And walking with God means to allow God to take full control of your life. You know, in the Bible, when you, when you read the book of, you know, Paul, Thessalonians, you know, uh, Philippians, he always starts with, I, the servant of God. Amen? Even, uh, even for Peter, I, the servant of God. Most of them, they always write it, at, uh, their first word, for the first sentence as I, as a servant of God. And this is not because God has forced them to be servant. God didn't force them to be servant. But they they submitted their freedom. They submitted their free will and subjected it to Christ. So they they they, they said they tempted the Lord, here's my freedom. Is my will, Lord. Use it for your glory. And that's great humility. You want to be great with the Lord? You want to be great in the King of God? And give your to Him. Now, if you don't want these things, you know, you have a choice. If you want this, don't, this thing, you don't want to be close with the Lord, you want to be, you know, to be best friend with the Lord, you want to do your own way, then when you go to heaven, why do you need to be chosen to the Lord? So if you don't want to be close to the Lord here on earth, then why do you want to be close to the Lord in heaven? It's the same way. So the Lord is telling you right now, you know, to just give yourself fully to the Lord. Just be close to the Lord. And in heaven you'll be close to the Lord. Amen. So let's have Okay, so let's really end with this. With, with this word. So before I end with this, so we always do this. All of us are ministers, okay, in this room. So we'll be sharing what God is, you know, what God is telling us in, in our life. Uh, in the message. So uh, for the conclusion, you know, if you are not walking humbly with God right now, okay, it's time for you, it's time for us to walk back with Him again. He is for you. In Philippians uh, 2, 1 and uh, 2, it says right here, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort for, uh, from His love, any common sharing in the spirit, any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one spirit, and 
of wine farm. Amen. So let's consider, you know, this this uh, word uh, for him today to really walk ourselves with the Lord. So may I ask uh, Pastor Blanche to lead us with worship. Hey guys, life is a picture so let's get out there and shoot some videos. Be sure to check out some of our other adventures. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching Super Dates Family Adventures. Please hit that like button and subscribe. Leave a comment and share. Thank you. God bless. And until next time, Super Dave out.